Hello, I'm Crystal Petrie and welcome to 60 Minutes With. Today I'm so excited because I am going to be educated on something that I love, I know just a little about, and that is the Sheriff's Department. And I am excited to say that Chief Dante Miller of Jefferson County, Texas Sheriff's Department is here with me. So thank you You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> for agreeing to educate me and probably some of the viewers as well about the Sheriff's Department. Okay. Now, a mutual friend of ours, Joe Evans Jr., suggested that I interview you. And when he introduced you to me, he said, He's the man behind the woman, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was fabulous, I thought. <laughs> uh, but basically what he was saying is you're the man behind the sheriff of Jefferson County, Texas, Zena Stevens. Mm -hmm. So when you hear that, what is that, what do you think? How does that make you feel being the man behind the woman? Uh, I'm not going to necessarily make it seem like it's a big thing that, you know, mm -hmm. it's a woman in the head. Uh, right. Because she's a, first of all, a great leader. Mm -hmm. And she uh, has great vision for this county and uh, continues to ever uh, just change and be welcome to change for this county. So I'm just another piece of that puzzle mm -hmm. that she's putting together and that she has put together. And, you know, it's, it's good. It's a good place to be in. Yeah. And obviously, we all know it's history. Uh, sheriff Zena Stevens was the first uh, African-American sheriff elected to. Uh, to be sheriff in Jefferson County ever. Yes. and um, she's just a wonderful person to work mm -hmm. for um, as the number two person I, uh, she give me she tasks me with a lot of things okay. I'm not gonna always say speeches and creams because she is my boss right and, uh, she have to lead me and she have to guide me and she have to mm -hmm. mold me and and but she's always respectful uh, towards me towards my family towards my um, just my career and she's always giving me great advice on how to better myself and to coach me through situations that come to my way. Okay, so how is it working for, or is there a difference, working for a man, for example, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you have, right. we all have, uh, versus working for a female? So, female perspective of things uh, mm -hmm. versus a male, when I, when I say that, I want to talk about I'm talking about Jefferson County Sheriff's Office right. as a law enforcement standpoint. Okay. Uh, she focused on not only the major things that the world sees, you know, the race relations, we deal with the, the jail, and we deal with the patrol side of it, but mm -hmm. she also, she tones it back a little bit in the approach of things. You know, she reminds us all we have families. Okay. And she makes sure that we are all just a part of that too, not just mm -hmm. being a part of the Sheriff's Office family, but to make sure we take time out in our personal lives with our own families and with our own uh, whatever uh, thing we got going on to make sure we take our time for that too. So just when you say a female perspective mm -hmm. of it, I think before a male would really just care less if you know you spend time with your family during the weekend. I'm not going to say they totally didn't care, right. but it wasn't. It's, it was wasn't that it was a topic of discussion. You know, she makes sure she's discussing how's home life, how is work life, how is the relationships you got going outside mm -hmm. of work. And those things are important in today's law enforcement. Excellent. So it sounds like she really tries to balance work it, and it's, life. It's a very balanced work and life uh, relationship with mm -hmm. her. And not only me, all mm -hmm. her employees, she's like that with. Okay. Now you uh, touched on it a little bit earlier that uh, Jefferson County, Texas, Sheriff Zena Stevens is the first African-American female in Jefferson County, but I did a little research and she's actually one of two, two black women in the United States mm -hmm. that's a sheriff. Why do you feel like it's taken so long for that history to manifest itself? When you, when you say a long time, uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize how close we still are from uh, the civil rights days and, mm -hmm. and the Jim Crow laws. We're right. still uh, relatively, I mean, you, you're talking the, the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, that, right. that we all had to live with. And we've had long-term sheriffs during them times. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Sheriff Culberson and then, you know, Sheriff Woods, Sheriff Griffin in mm -hmm. between that. And during those times, these guys, I mean, Sheriff, Sheriff Woods was sheriff for 20 years. Okay. And, uh, you know, before him, Sheriff Griffith was, what, six years, uh, uh, four or six years, uh, four or eight years, somewhere in between that. Mm -hmm. And Culperson was another 20-year sheriff. So in between just 
uh, Sheriff Woods and Sheriff Coberson, you're looking at over 40 years right. of being in office. So what I'm hoping, if we can be discussing this uh, in the next 20 years and saying, yes, yeah, Sheriff Steve has done 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we can have a Jefferson County show a long legacy of putting right. trust in the people that they have in office. Right. And so well, she's doing an amazing job of uh, being a leader for that position mm -hmm. today. So um, as far as getting to be into that point of it's, the, it's been taken so long. I think our generation, we reflect on, yeah, it should have happened back then. Yeah. But we wasn't living back then. We right. wasn't involved in that. Right. Like, Man, they should have, you know, as soon as they marched across the bridge, they should have had uh, African American shirts. Mm -hmm. But we were all being molded for this in these important times and appointed times. Uh, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King dream, we're living right now. Mm -hmm. So she's the one that's pushing past that dream. And now she's setting more path and, you know, more goals for us to her stepping stone so we can pull up and keep going. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make sure that I do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And I have my honor and my integrity that I continue to do it the right way. So one person's dream, we we live. And then her dream, we live. And then it, it keep on. Who knows, maybe one day it'll be my dream, you know? And then right. and to continue on through life for, for, for us all. And whenever our grandkids look back, it wouldn't be as long for them. They can mm -hmm. say, hey, my grandfather worked for that church. Right. And that lifespan seems short for them. I remember, I'm going to make a comment, and then I have a question. I remember uh, when President Obama was in office, and he nominated Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Mm -hmm. And, of course, she was elected and voted in. Not elected, but voted in. And her grandkids and her kids was just like, he said, they they acted like it was just another Monday mm -hmm. that, you know, something was happening. And he said, that's what progress looks like. Right. When, you know, you have a minority, you have a female that's stepping in a, a, a position that they've never been in before, mm -hmm. but progress is, okay, that it's, that's it, how it's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, it's, it doesn't surprise right. us. Right, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and, you, and you spoke on that, but that's mm -hmm. the type of agency she runs also. Okay. Because it's supposed to be like that. We're yes. supposed to reflect the community that we serve. Absolutely. It shouldn't be a surprise for an African-American deputy to drive down the streets or mm -hmm. a, a, a white female or a, even a white male to drive in certain neighborhoods. So right. us as leaders in the law enforcement world, it's, it's important that as we're training our guys up mm -hmm. that we make them aware of their surroundings and be comfortable with whatever area they're responsible for patrolling or investigating or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's our job. Are we perfect? No. Do we see areas where we need to build up? Yes. That's why it's called progress. And right. every year it'll be something. Once we fix this problem, it'll be another one. Yes. It'll be another one. It'll be yes. another one. But being able to adapt to change and recognize that, hey, that 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 need has already come and gone and we have mm -hmm. another need to take its place and we can continue to, to grow on. Right. Now, the sheriff's, the, the sheriff's office is an elected official office. Yes. Are there term limits for? No, the state, the state of Texas, we don't have any term limits for uh, the sheriff in Jefferson County. Okay. Um, it's every four years she's elected to mm -hmm. office, and uh, it's on the term of the presidential uh election so okay it's it's you know ironic president trump as it actually won jefferson county she also won as a black female democrat so that's right what's unique about jefferson county and mm -hmm. i don't th think you know we get the recognition is racism here yes we still have all that but what's unique here is i think people are starting to really focus on the character of a person and look and actually say hey this is the person we won't lead and guide mm -hmm. us in that next wave of of where we going in as a county as a whole mm -hmm. instead of just party lines party lines and say oh you this and you that right. and we have a need for jefferson county and this person gonna fix our need right so of course i introduced you as uh chief deputy yeah. dante miller yeah. so how did you become chief deputy for me yes <laughs> <laughs> well I'm graduated. Uh, graduated high school in 2001. Okay. Uh, I graduated from Silsby High School, okay. and uh, right out of high school, I went. I went into a uh, community college in Lufkin, and I, I knew I was that kid. Just coming to high school, like I'm gonna be a cop. I knew really? I wanted to be. Yeah, I was like, all my friends would tell you, they're like, you don't want really knew what you wanted to be. And yes, you, and you still doing it. <laughs> and so I, um, I when I went to college, I would come home every weekend, and I would just go and work into the correctional facility every weekend. Sheriff Ed Kane was the sheriff mm -hmm. in Orange County, and you were allowed to do that. 
they, it, I, he put me on a reserve status. So oh, okay. when I got, I got on a reserve status, I was able to come and work on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And it would be some Fridays I come home, I wouldn't even go actually home. I'll go straight there, work all night. I was doing it for free yeah. and then go home the next so morning. So you were interning. I was pretty much interning, yes. yes. And then uh, so my mom and my stepdad at the time, they was going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. They were, uh, and, and my mom, you know, I was like, I'm I'm gonna see if I can slip out of school, you know, <laughs> try to ask them. <laughs> and I uh, told them that I was uh, dropping out of college at the time. And so I went to Ed Kane mm -hmm. and asked him for a job. And he said, well, you know, if you, uh, if you uh, promise me you're gonna get your degree, one day I will, I'll consider hiring you. And I mm -hmm. told him that, and you know, this was 22 years from this day, you yeah. know. And, uh, and that's when it, that's my career started, and it started in a correction facility there. Mm -hmm. And I went to uh, police academy when I was tw I was twenty years old when I went to police academy, and finished at twenty one the same month. Mm -hmm. And I uh, got on patrol there, in in Hardin County. And uh, that following year, that's when Mitch Woods hired me here. Sheriff okay. Stevens was the chief deputy here at the time. Okay. And uh, I, I actually met her when I was in a police academy uh, during my twenty year range. Mm -hmm. And I got on here, and I came here, and I worked patrol here for right at a right at a year, and I went undercover. Wow! So okay. they put me undercover. Uh, chief Hobbs was uh, uh, Jimmy Singletary, the chief of Beaumont. Right. He was the major of that unit at the time. Uh, Ron Hobbs was the chief, and uh, Sheriff Stevens. She was the chief of the law enforcement side. We had several divisions in, and obviously Mitch Woods was the sheriff. Mm -hmm. And um, so at about year two of working, year three of working undercover, we had a promotional exam, a sergeant exam. And that exam consisted of, a, you know, we had to do a, a written exam and an oral exam. And okay. I passed the test, but I didn't finish as high what, what I thought I, you know, should finish. But I didn't get promoted that time. Okay. And um, Sheriff Stevens told me at that time, she was like, hey, man, we, uh, man, we you know we see great things in you, you know, and you need to take these tests serious. Was she sheriff at that time? She was the chief. So. Oh, okay, still chief. Okay. But building a, a building an agency, it takes everybody to try to build it up, you right. know, because it wasn't very many minorities. When I say minorities, African American males, black okay. men working at the sheriff's office, a lot of you know majority of black males came and they went to Beaumont PD because they made more money and it was a lot more. You know, you don't have to worry about elections. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot more easy. And it was just hard to get on with the sheriff's office during them times. And so uh, we had some 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 great uh, African-American guys working at the sheriff's office at that time. They were different positions and key roles of the sheriff's office at that time. And so I, uh, the next promotion exam came around. And I studied, 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 mm -hmm. and, I, and I finished number one. Wow. As a sergeant, I think I was around 27 around that time. Okay. And um, so I stayed in. I stayed in the undercover role in narcotics, um, and shortly after that, I got on the FBI task force, which was a local task force for uh, Safe Streets Task Force. That ran its course for a couple of years, and then I got on I got on the DEA task force mm -hmm. when I came across Tim Dorso, who was the chief of uh, Port Arthur, uh, Port Arthur PD. Mm -hmm. and we worked well with each other. We worked close with each other, and we had a lieutenant's test come up. At this time, Sheriff, I mean, Sheriff Stevens had left and went to Prairie View. Uh, uh, Tim Smith was the chief deputy then, and uh, Mitch uh, was still the sheriff. And I was really contemplating of passing up the promotional exam and not taking a lieutenant's exam because okay. I was satisfied. I was comfortable. Right. And uh, during those times, even Sheriff Stevens, I mean, she would reach back and say, hey, no, you need to keep pushing, you need to keep pushing. I, you know, we've set the bar, you need to keep pushing. Right. So I took the lieutenant's test. Well, I was reluctant to take the lieutenant's <laughs> test. But uh, people like uh, Tim Dorsell would come to me mm -hmm. and say, hey, man, no, you need to take it. You are, you're on a great path and you have a great career. So, but I didn't have a degree still. So okay. I knew that was my hindrance in my line of work. I can only test so far up. So I tested and I scored number one. Okay. So me thinking that, hey, you're going to be able to stay in narcotics. This is the way your path has been. Nope. They put me on patrol. So they put me on graveyard <laughs> patrol. And I was like, oh, man, I'm on graveyard <laughs> patrol. I've done all this stuff for these people. And, you know, they, they put What were me those on. hours? It was six to six at night. Oh. And so it was long nights. Yeah. Just my family. You know, I, I'm like, man, this is just so not what I want. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, God has a way of, of changing your past for you at times to elevate you in, in other times. Mm -hmm. And so I um, 
I was riding patrol one night, and I got to the point where I was pretty much like, oh, go here, do this, park up for a while, do this. You know, get start trying to not really looking forward to what the future can really be, my, can come my way if I mm -hmm. took advantage of opportunity. And so uh, it was a Bowman PD guy, uh, Howard Trahan was out working one night. He was doing, he was looking online, and he said, "Man, I'm in the online, I'm in the online uh, classes." I'm like, "Oh, okay, that's cool." Mm -hmm. So I have a twin brother who who works at the sheriff's office too. So I reached out to him, like, "Man, we got to go to school," and he was like, ah, "Yeah, man, we got to go to school," because he's he's like my guy, you know, boom, yeah. boom, boom, bump me up. And so uh, after talking it over with my family and everything, I enrolled in school. Mm -hmm. Scared out of my mind because now this is at Lamar University. This is at Lamar University. Okay. So I go, I go up to talk to an advisor, and she says, "Dante, if you can take, if you can pass math online, mm -hmm. you better do it." Because online courses started to become that was relatively new right. around that time, and I was like, "Oh man, math?" She's like, "Yeah." <laughs> She's like, "Because if you can't, you know, you need to go and sit, to class. And sit down in class, yeah. Because you can always have this hurdle, and most people quit because they can't get over the math hurdle." So I took that course, I made an A in it. Okay. And so when I bought into it, that's mm -hmm. what's the key. I bought into that I can do this and I'm and I can do college with everybody else. Mm -hmm. I took on a heavy load. I I wow. went online and on and on campus. I went to, I even enrolled in L I T at the same time. And you were still doing And I was your still six to six. I was still doing my nights. I was still taking care of my family. I was wow. still but I got focused because I yes. seen, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And if I do it and I attack it the right way, I can get out. So it's, right. it was so many people, white, black, a lot of people in my corner, helping me through this process. And hey, you can take this class at this time. I get off at six o'clock in the morning, be in the class from eight to ten. Wow. Go home, go to sleep. And then you know, if it was a if it was one of those mini sessions, I can go on campus with. I'll be like, all right, wake up at two, be in class at three, work, go to that class three to five. It was oh just goodness. a crazy schedule. My wife was there with me, you know. Yeah. My wife, who's been married, I've been married to 19 years this year. She's mm -hmm. been through this whole journey with me, and so I, uh, I get through, I get through my bachelor's degree in three years, and I was wow. like, wow, that was smoking. Cause before <laughs> I realized, was. It, I, and and I and I graduated with honors, so mm -hmm. uh, like 3.79 GPA. I, <laughs> I had to say 79 because I wanted a 3.8, but yeah, <laughs> but it's cool. But uh, we we got through that in in. The day that I graduated, because I was going to school, but I wasn't boasting that I was going to school. It was just okay. kind of like, hey, I'm doing this thing, I'm doing this thing. And uh, Sheriff called me, and she was like, hey, man, you're doing a great thing for yourself. You just change. You don't realize how much you just change your life on stepping that up or taking that, you know, next step for your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the following uh, month, you know, uh, she called me in, and she was, you know, she said, hey, I need to meet with you. And I'm like, okay. Called to what the principal's yeah. office. Yeah, like what? Yeah. What's going on? And she started uh, asking me, "What do I, you know, my getting my ideas and everything as a major spot? What mm -hmm. do I think the role in?" And and I gave it to her, and she was like, "Well, how do you feel like if you uh, be becoming the next major here?" And I was like. I gotta talk to my wife, you yeah. know. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't. Let me talk to my wife, and who I, you know, communicate with about everything, right? And so I went home, talked it with it, my wife, prayed on it, boom, yes, you know, and I took it. And so that's when my career started into administration, which is different from being a role, a role guy because administration just got to focus on leading this department and okay. seeing where it's going the next day and the next year and the next month and, you know, how we can keep this place going. And so I jumped into that role. And I was like, man, this is good. I, I can I can do this. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, November the TPC explosion happens. Boom, blows up in Fort Natchez. Well, this okay. is my first. Uh, this is my first uh, man-made disaster hit. I worked aside with the county judge, emergency management. You know, the sheriff. We all working together to solve this issue for the public. Mm -hmm. And then we had a, a, a COVID hit us. And then we had a hurricane. We had you know officers die. We have had you know. Uh, all this stuff going on in the midst of it, and bam, we get hit with a lawsuit. We get hit with this lawsuit in the middle of all this, and you know, and the sheriff is like, "Okay, we got it. We, you know, get right. sued." And and the suit was based on me getting promoted because wow. I was African American male. So based on you getting promoted to, to major, chief. okay, you wasn't chief deputy. I wasn't yet. chief deputy yet. Okay, and uh, and I said, "Man, 
And uh, so she was like, but I didn't promote you to, uh, because of color of your skin. I didn't mm -hmm. promote you because of you, uh, you know, I promoted you because you are you and I need you. Right. You know, your skill set, I need. Mm -hmm. And so don't you worry about all this other stuff. I'm in your corner. We're going to fight this together. And, you know, but you're going to hear some things and, you you know, you're gonna, some people are going to bring you down, but don't let that be your reasoning to revert from being you. Mm -hmm. And so... We get we uh, go through all this stuff, and in the midst of that, I get promoted to chief. In the midst of the lawsuit. In the midst of all this, um, this lawsuit pending. So okay. when, I, when you say lawsuit, it, it takes year, it takes right. a couple of years it for it. So we're not even worried about the lawsuit no more. Okay. We're just focusing on our business. She never let me get down on that. She didn't even get down on it. She showed mm -hmm. up to work every day. She smiled. She take care of home. She take care of her husband. She take care of this place. And it was always still about work business. We mm -hmm. didn't let that be a black cloud over it. It was just something else we know we had to deal with. Okay. And so um, when I was a major, I'm like, man, you know, I need to do more uh, because COVID had shut down. Uh, training and everything, so I was like, I'm gonna go get my master's degree. Just like that. Just, just thought about it some more. I'm gonna go get it, you know. <laughs> okay. And so, in and in my family, uh, like I have a sister in law. She was like, Well, I'm going to get mine too. So she's a school teacher. She's mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna get mine. So we was like, All right, let's go to school. So we jumped in college again, and I knocked that out in a year. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, Now my twin brother, he 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 done his bachelor's. He's in the master's program too. Like okay. super proud of him. And so. Uh, Whatever I, uh, in the midst of that, I, I get promoted to chief deputy. And whenever I'm a chief deputy, obviously, yeah, now I'm here now. And that's my path. I mean, wow. it's so much more other stuff happened, yes. but that's in a nutshell. <laughs> so as chief deputy, what is your job responsibility? What is your, like, what exactly do you do? My job is to continue the, the, the sheriff. First, first of all, it's her, it's her department. Okay. And, Whoever the chief is has to understand that we work for the sheriff. The sheriff is our boss. Okay. So I will never put myself in a um, in a conversation saying that I can do the sheriff mm -hmm. job, and because she's the one that appointed me to this job. So we have at the sheriff's office we have the strong marine division, patrol, criminal investigations, a livestock division, aviation division, um, courthouse security. We have school resource officers. We have uh, a traffic division. My job, ro my job role is to make sure all these functioning divisions mm -hmm. coincide with each other on a daily basis. And each of these divisions, okay. you know, they run to a captain. You know, they have sergeants, lieutenants, and captains, mm -hmm. and then we have a major in between us. Okay. But my, me and the major role, we work together uh, in coordinating all the captains to work as one okay and that can be that can be tough at so times. it's captain then major and then chief okay the sergeant it? lieutenant captain major and chief and you work with the majors i work with the majors and okay. it's two chiefs at the department so we have a law enforcement chief mm -hmm. and a correction chief so his he handles the corrections umbrella as far as the major and the captains there okay. and i handle the law enforcement as far as the major and the captains on my side okay. so they mirror each other but they come to a point to the sheriff who's okay. at the top and she gets her she give her marching orders and we have to send out her marching orders in a way that's more professional that's that's always gonna you know reflect the direction that it's going and it's our job to bring the stuff up back up to her hey this is working this is not working we right. need to look at this with the personnel mm -hmm. this is the, the way the finance is going we're spending here we need more money here uh we need vehicles and you know she's handling like this do this do this so it's a busy this is a 24 our operations it's been times at three o'clock in the morning i'm on the phone with the sheriff us wow. trying to figure out how we're going to deal with another yeah. situation or a possible situation and so she's very very she's an active active sheriff so by her being active active sheriff we got to be active, active chiefs we got to yeah. be majors and you know for for so long mm -hmm. and that and that makes it it's work for us right now it sounds like, and of course, this is me on the outside. That sounds like a lot. It is. Is it a lot? It's it's a, it's a lot, but it's mm -hmm. a lot. It, it it runs a lot smoother because you know you have the support of the sheriff, and you know you have okay. support of a good major and a good captains and good lieutenants and good sergeants and good deputies, and that's where 
you have to stay focused on. You okay. have to stay focused on the overall aspects of each level, and we have to have respect for each level of the what I call leadership. Even the lowest person is a level of lead, leadership at the okay. sheriff's office because we got to have respect for each one to make this thing run smooth. Now, you knew you wanted to be a police officer or rather in law enforcement yes. since you were young. How did that come about? Did you see someone? Well, I, my, I'm, for me, uh -huh. I had, uh, it's a, it's a um, black investigator in Hardin County. His name Thomas Tyler. Okay. So Thomas Tyler was my, him and my aunt was married growing up. And so we, that's what I, that's the first glimpse of law enforcement that I've ever seen from being yay high, like okay. seeing the bubble gum lights, he used to drive a car like that. Oh, okay. That was the first glimpse of law enforcement. Uh, another guy that worked over there named Larry Gilder, he was mm -hmm. he was there too. But them was the only two black guys I ever known in law enforcement growing up. Okay. I didn't, I, well, it was another sergeant and salesman named Paul Darks too. But other than that, everybody I know in law enforcement was a, a white male, you know, mm -hmm. with very few white females, you know, that I came across in my life. But that's just something that attracted me, you know, growing up. Like, I want to be a first responder or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I was so eager as a child being, like, into that uh, firefighters, police. And my mom would, she said, you know what, I'm going to go be a volunteer fireman. She was a volunteer fireman. Wow. Like, in my youth just because I can get around that <laughs> wow. rush. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so she was like, I'm doing it for you, you know, come on, let's go. Yeah. And so we would go up like on weekends, wash a fire truck or do something like what? that. So, you know, I've written, so I have a special place in my heart for even for those type of people, those first responders, mm -hmm. firemen, the EMS uh, for, um, agencies, because it's all one. We just, you know, we work for the public. Okay. Now, as I've stated, I know a little bit about the sheriff's department, not much at all. So can sheriff deputies pull people over for speeding? Because I heard that they can't and they Ooh, don't. Yeah. So try to speed by one and see if they want to come for you. You're going to be calling me like, I got a ticket. <laughs> Look, the sheriff's office is a 100% uh -huh. fully function law enforcement agency. It is okay. no different from Bowman PD. Port okay. Arthur, we are a 100% fully functioning law enforcement agency mm -hmm. and for the law enforcement roles is my responsibility when you right. come across a sheriff deputy on the waterway a fugitive warrant guy a narcotics guy a a whatever you got mm -hmm. at the sheriff's office it funnels through the law enforcement division okay. now on the correction side is the difference part of the sheriff no other chief has a corrections division that they have to deal with. Only the sheriff. The sheriff is the wow. the, the the chief law enforcement agent uh, mm -hmm. person in the county. So she runs the jail also. So she has to manage that side of it as well. So everybody needs the sheriff in local law enforcement because you got to bring someone to jail. And so when you wow. go to jail, you're going to the sheriff's office jail. You know? Okay. That's how. That's what's unique about the sheriff's office. Now, if someone wants to be a sheriff deputy, mm -hmm. what what's that process? Do they have to get? Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay. the same process as being a police officer. You have okay. to go to police academy. Mm -hmm. You have to be a TCO certified applicant. Uh, TCO certified. What's that? T uh, it's it's our it's TCO okay. is for our uh, the state uh, Texas. Uh, commission of law enforcement okay. and that's everybody has a, a TCO license who's a peace officer and a correction officer has to have it as well mm -hmm. and so um, that's what a, a, a basic peace officer license had you got to have that to become mm -hmm. either sheriff deputy or police officer. Now one of the main things in law enforcement I would say maybe the last 10 years mm -hmm. has been a priority is diversity training mm -hmm. within law enforcement do does the sheriff's department have diversity training and how does that look so the state make us do diversity oh training. okay so that's a mandate training that diversity training okay. but for us the sheriff's office we are not depending on a diversity training to actually train a person how to be a good person you can't mm -hmm. train a person on have a good heart there's okay. no way no training in this world will make me teach you how to be good to the public I don't care who you are, because you got to even accept that as the training. And wow, so if okay. you're not accepting that or if you're not uh, willing for change, I don't know, really know how to tell you how to be a good cop. Mm -hmm. So before that even starts, one of the things that we do, we focus on the very first person that's sitting in it when you do an interview. Mm -hmm. We're reading people. Which, what kind of person are you away from law enforcement? 
we, I mean, one of her questions she asked, and that was funny, she asked, she says, what do you think a cop do? And you see me, ah, That's a good question. Or what kind of job you think you're getting into? <laughs> and they're like, ah, ah, because it's TV. It's so much TV and there's so much influence from oh, media yes. that people think it's I one way. Think about that. And it's not that way. Yeah. And so we kind of be sitting there like, okay, okay. Some people questions are what answers are way off. Mm-hmm. So we're like, oh, yeah, that person, you know, they're way out there. Yeah. And some people are right in the middle of, you know, what we know we can work with, you know. And mm-hmm. that's where it starts for us of looking for people with good hearts, our backgrounds and, you know, uh, the type of people they are in, in their communities. And that's how we try to build our department. Mm-hmm. Do you think the sheriff's department and law enforcement, I'm just going to throw that in there, should be diverse? And what are the positives to diversity in law enforcement, mm-hmm. especially the sheriff's department? And are there any negatives to it? Well, the, the, uh, everybody, every governmental issue, uh, uh, employee, mm-hmm. whether it's federal, state, or local, or even county, I think everyone should be diverse. Your agency okay. should reflect the community that you serve. It should never be a time where uh, someone in the community approach the government entity that they pay taxes to and be uncomfortable with taking care of their governmental business. Mm-hmm. We all have government business we have to take care of. So it should be a place where everyone is comfortable with, with coming. The negative side, mm-hmm. uh, so that's why I feel like it should be a uh, right. diverse place and reflect the community. Now, the negative side is finding that diverse. So okay. the negative side would be, for instance, if you're a black guy, you never grew up around white people, and how comfortable are you with the other side of the community? Right. And that's the stuff that we recognize early on, like when we started paying attention to our training program, mm-hmm. had a Captain Lawrence Flanagan who really helped uh, me and the sheriff and him, we, we molded a, a good training program. So that was one of the pinpoints idea uh, problems that we recognized was we were uncomfortable with our opposite races. So it was some blacks okay. uncomfortable with whites, some whites uncomfortable with blacks. I'm not saying anything racist. Mm-hmm. It just said uncomfortable. Right. Which some people are. I wasn't because I grew up around white people. But right. some blacks don't actually grow up around black uh, white people, right. and some whites don't actually. Some Hispanics. So what we done, we built it with our training program to where this guy is going to ride with this person. This person is going to really get down to the basis of our culture, of our you know. You, you just don't go and treat people like this. You need to let your window down. You need to wave at people. You need okay. to, because it's kind of disrespecting the black community for you not to speak. You know, mm-hmm. I know how that speak to us. <laughs> right. So we teach right. people this and, and build that comfort level with each other, trying to you know build that bridge. Mm-hmm. And we start seeing the uptick of our retention. We start seeing the uptick of people being comfortable. You know, the complaints are way down because we recognize that real early in our, uh, she recognized it real early in our term and she, task us to fix it so do you think that like something and of course i'm saying it's simple it's probably not something as simple as rolling down your window and waving and acknowledging people in the community does that work well i i think that it's a part of it mm-hmm. so for for me um knowing your community is is better so i i, I would do it little things like we show up at city council meetings within our rural community areas where before you probably didn't get a, a deputy to show up there. Okay. You, they have community events. We we are part of them events. Say, hey, we're going to show up and be part of those events. But one thing that we, while I say uh, it's got to get a little bit more personal because it's easy for me to have an event at a large park area and people bring their kids. Well, my kids are showing up. Maybe you might even bring your kids. Mm-hmm. But is that the, really the kids that we're trying to reach? Because we know what kind of product we're raising, and people say, oh, it has to start at home. I think we need to dig a little bit deeper in that. So the sheriff is real vocal about us going out into the deeper of the communities. And, you know, whether it's white neighborhood or black neighborhood, uh, that people can't get their kids to us. And so we will get out and we will communicate with these people. We hand them our cards. We give mm-hmm. the kids stickers. We do all these things to let them know, hey, we're okay because that kid probably can't make it to that event. You know what I mean? Events right. are great. And I'm not knocking events, right. but we are still missing this group of people to where they say, oh, man, I remember you. You know what right. I mean? So we go into the schools and we mingle with the kids in the schools and we and we show them our equipment in the schools because that might be the only time that they see us. 
at this school. So we go to them, we go mm -hmm. to their churches, you know, we go to, you know, and, and whenever I'm talking is you're imaging black kids. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. everybody always, how we going to those neighborhoods? But let me tell you, that's the big misappropriate opponent about law enforcement across the board, about government work, mm -hmm. about media. Everybody always put in their mind when we talk like this, we're talking about that black community. That's exactly and what that's I was thinking. that's wrong. That's the wrong perception they even have okay. if you have in law enforcement. Yes. That's the perception that the sheriff is about getting rid of. We okay. shouldn't have that perception because okay. there's white neighborhoods like that too. There's black neighborhoods. There's Hispanic neighborhoods. There's Asian neighborhoods. Okay. We are one big melting pot. So when we already put in our mind that this black community have the problem, yes. we already stigmatizing this black community. So now when it's guy become a cop he thinks this community is supposed to be treated a certain way because he came in with that mindset of this community wow. instead of being a wide having a wide vision of every community had every race has that community within that race yes. that we're all responsible for helping and so if we don't get that if wow. officers don't get that if you know leaders don't get that mm -hmm. you're going to be unsuccessful at continuing your uh, going forward in your agency because you're not helping everybody. You're just singling out this little position of town. Yeah. You know, it, it may look bad, but it might not be all bad. Because what's bad to me is not bad to that person. Well, They're yes. happy in the area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh my God, you really, you, <laughs> you really just ran me my rights because that's a, like my mental right was the black community, black right. kids right. instead of everyone because everyone. everybody does live in those neighborhoods. So to make you laugh, we've been to Legacy High School just as well we've been to uh, elementary <laughs> at BISD or Port Arthur or Bob yes. Hope. All of them are the same to us. We, yes. Even though these people got money over here, they don't have a relationship with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what are we doing? We're lying right. to ourselves if we think this is working. That's why the sheriff and, and even, when I say the sheriff, it's her mm -hmm. team. And, and you, you know, you'll hear me say the sheriff a lot because we built off her team right. and that's her team her brand is to go out into the community rich white black green purple we going we mm -hmm. coming here we are <laughs> everybody can love on yeah. us. you know what i'm saying yes. so yeah. you shouldn't be able to not love on the police officers because your parents are successful you know everybody should have that you know access to us or uh, not successful mm -hmm. we all should be accessible to our public because that's who pay our salaries Okay, okay, very good. So, um, for me, anyway, I'll speak personally. Again, I did not know much about the Sheriff's Department. Do you feel like most people don't know a lot about the Sheriff's Department? Is it a, a best kept secret? I think it's a, it's just depending on how good the leader is. Okay. And it's a shame that you don't know a lot about the Sheriff's Office because mm -hmm. it should have been more public size. And we're going we're gonna to get your mind there. Look at that <laughs> and you'll have a better understanding. Thank you. Take your kids there. <laughs> but uh, I think, like even myself, mm -hmm. like, I, whenever I'm growing up, you hear about police officers, you hear about that. Like, before I came to work at Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, mm -hmm. I knew no Jefferson County deputies. Right. So it's not, you know, you're talking about someone. You're the first person right. that I know. So okay. it's not like you, you, you forget, it's just that I think when you live in a community like this, but in Hardin County, which is the next county over, they really know their Sheriff's Office because it's okay. more rural. Here we have Bowman, we have Port Arthur, we have Needham, we have Port Nature's, and all these people have their own police departments. So the mm -hmm. focus is easy to put be put on the police departments because right. that's what you see a lot of. Okay. You see what I mean? Yes. And the sheriff's office here is responsible for patrolling the rural areas. Now we have embedded warrant guys and narcotics guys within mm -hmm. the cities, but you don't see a lot of us here because we are out patrolling China, Nome, and those areas. Now, if you go talk to someone out there, they're gonna be like, "Yeah, sure, sure. that's normal to them because that's the normal way of life to see us as their law okay. enforcement." But as you come into the city of Bowman, you're like, "Yeah, I know, sure, Steve's a sheriff, but really don't know what she do." I mean, she's a you know, good-looking person on TV, but yes. I don't know what their job function it is. But right. that's how important it is to know who you're electing into office because mm -hmm. this person is a really powerful. That's a powerful position who can make a lot of positive change to the community. Right, right. Does every state and county have a sheriff's mm -hmm. department? Mm -hmm. Every county. In the U.S.? two hundred. In the state of Texas, it's 254 counties. Now, okay. Louisiana call them parishes. Right. But everybody has uh, a sheriff of their county. The okay. sheriff is the uh, chief law enforcement agent, uh, person of each county. Because the city of Beaumont can, I mean, not saying they would do this, they can pass a charter tomorrow and say we don't want a police department. 
which will bring the sheriff will have to come in and police the area. Okay. They can uh, any any city incorporated in, within Jefferson County, we can still have to be responsible for taking care of their law enforcement because the elected sheriff was elected to do their job. Can they do a charter for and say we no longer want a sheriff's department? No, because the sheriff is a constitutional office. The sheriff oh, is their okay. own elected office. No different from the county judge and a commissioner that you elect into office. But the sheriff is a constitutional office. So you have, to, you have to. You have to have. You have to have. Okay, mm -hmm. you have to have a sheriff. So what is the difference? Uh, if you can give me like one or two, if there's one or two, what are the one or two main differences between? A sheriff's department and a police department. The main two differences is the police department's its primary responsibility is for the incorporated cities. The okay. sheriff's office is primary responsibility for the rule outside the everything outside that city circle, the sheriff's office is responsible for. Okay. Yes. So are they responsible for the city too? Like do they share with the police so department? So we, we now the, the good thing about the sheriff is we can come into the cities and work. Okay. So we can come in and do whatever a city, we, we just don't enforce city, city uh, ordinance okay. because it's set forth by the city council. But whatever laws is broken within the city of Beaumont, Port Arthur, Nederland, Port Natchez, we still can enforce. So like right now, I can mm -hmm. leave here, pull someone over on this city street. If I see someone getting beat up right now, I pull up and I can take them to jail just like a city officer can. Okay. But as you spread out outside the city, incorporated areas, that city officer can't go and pull someone over on the county street. Really? The county has to. Same okay. as our deal, when you get outside my our county, I can't go pull someone over in Liberty County, but the state trooper can. You see how it continues oh, to grow? Yes. And, and and then and you go to state trooper, you go outside of Texas, and then you go to federal, and then that's how, that's how the system is designed to grow. So that is, and again, I'm still learning, if we already have a police department, mm -hmm. do we really need a sheriff's department? Yes. Or you have to. Vice versa. You, I mean, yes. couldn't the sheriff's department just do everything within if you, if the it, city and the... And, and some counties are set up like that. When mm -hmm. you talk about Bevel Oaks, I don't know if you heard that community. Yes. No. These are small communities with actual... They actually have the own city council groups. They actually okay. have their own governing bodies, but they don't have a judicial system in that governing body. Okay. So the sheriff come in and take care of Now, they can pass a charter tomorrow to have a judicial system. Now they got the police officers and judge and municipal okay. courts. And then they become that city you know, traffic issue. And then mm -hmm. we go right outside of there again. We just stay on the outside. But to, saying that they don't, we cover that for them. So you really do need both a yeah, it's police a, it's department a, yes. and a yeah, you need every, you need every law okay. enforcement agency you can have to, to help make this thing work. <laughs> it's not enough of us. So. Okay. <laughs> so the police chief reports to the mayor yes. of the of the city yes. of each city. Who does the sheriff? Sheriff reports to the citizens of Jefferson County. Really? So they don't. Okay, this might be a bad question. So there, there's no oversight. There's no oversight because she's in a that person is into an elected position. Now you have a oversight for licenses, like you know, and regulations right. by the state. But as far as just being, do she have to wake up in the morning and call the mayor and say, "Hey, can we do this and do that?" No, she's that person. Wow. Yes. Okay. For Jefferson County. Okay. So we again probably for the last 10 years, at least it's been major, majorly reported about defunding law enforcement, police specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and by defunding, I mean reallocating, not completely taking their budget away or- But that's how, take, that's how- see, that's, that's how it's portrayed. That's how it's, but that's that's how it's portrayed. It's, it's, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Take out money. Right. I'm like, man, where are we gonna get it from? <laughs> You know, and yeah. I, I'm not a proponent, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I don't say defund the police. Right. Now, have we looked at our budget and said, hey, how can we help a certain uh, right. downfall of what we're going? And I think mm -hmm. that's what people are really screaming for. It's like, hey, we want you guys to focus on mental health more. Well, we are. That's mm -hmm. what's one of her. She, she'll tell you she's a big, big, big just cheerleader of uh, mental health and how we're mm -hmm. going to help curve it and how can we be helped with their fight. But that's not taken away from her normal operation. So, right. you know, it might be a time where we might, I mean, we need two more deputies to handle our mental health deals, you know, mm -hmm. uh, calls. We've set a program up. She has a mental health program that she's hunt, it's 24 hours a day that is ran. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's where I think people are um, 
and I don't want to say the word to, to offend someone, but that's what people are ha lacking the information in okay. on actually what are your locals, uh, even chiefs and sheriffs, are doing uh, to help curve a situation that us as citizens say we have, mm -hmm. you know, because we work for the citizens. Right. So what is that elected sheriff doing to say, hey, how are you fighting a fight on mental health? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of saying, hey, defund them. There's just, you know, you're saying, what are you doing to, what are you doing to help our issues? And that's what I think. When I hear defund the police, I'm mm -hmm. like, let's be real. So I don't think everybody's on the same page with it. Because I right. think you have some people say, get rid of police departments and, and sheriff's offices and, and try to get rid of agencies. You really have that. Mm -hmm. But then you also have that person that's really concerned about, but the mental health people are not getting attention to. Right. And so... Now, when that person saying defund the police and that person said defund the police, this third person is saying, y'all are crazy. <laughs> y'all want to take all our money. Right. Y'all have two totally different meanings. Right. Of so what exactly, if you can, like, give us some examples, is the Sheriff's Department of Sheriff Zena Stevenson doing in the mental health realm? So for us, mm -hmm. like I told you, she's responsible for the correctional facility. Mm -hmm. And for the, uh, she brought in a, a, a uh, medical contract that focused on mental health. Okay. When they come to jail, they have different process of how they get processed into our jail and what site meds they get on. And so we partnership also with mental health, MHMR, and we got three full-time deputies that works with, that's 100% of their job capacity. Okay. We gave all of our guys the training of handling mental health calls and when to identify someone as a mental health crisis and also how to make a referral for mental health. Okay. So these three deputies, was just, just a small glimpse of it, is when someone get out of jail and they're on psych medication, what we're missing is that person getting out of jail going home and continue to do their meds the way that they're supposed to do their meds. Okay. They might do them for a week. They might do them for two weeks. But they get into that third week where they start getting out of medication, and we don't have no one to say, okay, hold on, we got to get your medication refilled. Get back on it. Or okay. someone shows up and say, you're going through a mental crisis. Let me go get you some help. That's those three deputies' jobs. Oh, wow. And okay. so they'll go, and they might have, have a list of names that, you know, have gotten out of jail 30 days before. And okay, today is the day we're gonna go check on these people. And they're not only riding by themselves, they have a mental health professional person wow. riding in the passenger seat the whole time that they're work. So okay. that not only are they going and help with support, they got we got the mental health profession, you know, dealing with that side of it with them also. Oh wow, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, and so it's really, really, you know, we've really, really been proud of that program because mm -hmm. we've seen some of the effects of those type of crimes where people were coming to jail just for trespassing or just for because of course if they're not in their right mind they're gonna go trespass right where they you know and so our guys and i'm talking to jefferson county sheriff's office mm -hmm. have been trained to recognize just to say this guy's in a mental crisis let's get okay. him some help let's not put him in jail on a trespass right. which costs more to house them in our jail on taxpayers we're going to take them and get them some mental help help and they won't have to worry about a criminal charge versus getting their mind right. How long has that been in existence she, in Jefferson County? Um, it started up right at, uh, she was the chief when she started being vocal about it. Mm -hmm. So when she left, it started coming into effect when Sheriff Woods was here and she just put came back in. When she came back in, she just took it to just a whole different level. Okay. Yeah. How does the Sheriff Department receive funding? From the taxpayers. We are a... Okay. Uh, we, we go in front of commissioner's court. It's mm -hmm. the county judge and the four commissioners. So, you know, they, yeah. they they set our budget for us. We submit a mm -hmm. budget to them. It's a zero balance budget. And we actually, you know, we're probably about to go through that process within the next couple of months. And they yell now what we get, but that's all they do. They set our budget and send us to work. And so it's up to us to manage our budget through year to year. But it's through the taxpayers. So that's every year you go before mm -hmm. commissioner's court? Every year you go into front of commissioner's court and you submit what you project your budget to be. But that's not okay. only the sheriff's office, that's every county. Uh, oh, actually. okay. The cities do the same thing. The federal government does the same thing. And, you know, even every every go governmental entity has a budget that they have to go see uh, and submit and get approved. Okay. Does the sheriff's department, I know the police department has it, does the sheriff's department have qualified immunity, meaning they basically citizens cannot sue the sheriff deputies for... And see, that's a that's a more of a, um, a law enforcement question across the board. Okay. That's not like saying that sheriff or the 
police or a state trooper. That's mm -hmm. just a peace officer. And I think in the past, in the, in the previous 10 years, they've mm -hmm. been brought out because I think some people was felt that a guy shouldn't get his retirement because he, you know, he committed a crime. But right. but uh, as far as pensions, you know, I'm pro police. I got to tell you, I'm pro police, and I'm pro. Yes. I'm pro listening to other too. people too. Yes. And, and what I'm saying too. is, but you know, I know some people look and say, hey, this cop done this, he shouldn't be able to get his pension mm -hmm. because of this. But also, uh, turn you know, you flip it. But this this guy's been taking care of his other people's families for all these years, yes. and he made a but you know. Some of it I ain't gonna say mistake. He made mm -hmm. he made a bad choice. Okay. In the end of his career, should his family have to suffer for all the years that they suffer for him being gone to I never work. thought about that. And so we'll be creating another void on yes. taking away from this officer, you know. Okay. Let the criminal justice system handle this. If he messed up, let the criminal justice system say, You done wrong, you gotta mm -hmm. go pay for your sins and your money still is taking care of the family that, you know, you was Why? there raising. So that's Wow. Kind of, you know, where I stand with it. Yes. 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 Man, you're giving me a lot of aha moments <laughs> <laughs> doing this interview. It's been so amazing for me. Um, so what does the sheriff, I guess, or the department, like if a deputy breaks the law, how how is that handled? So for the sheriff, is, I mean, like I said, perspective. She has a different perspective of a lot of other people because she brought, okay. what she brought in, she brought in, a, what we used to have, we used to have a disciplinary review board, we pick mm -hmm. officers. It was this board consisted of officers. We bring this officer in front of this board, they say, you done wrong, yes, you done right. What she's done, she removed two of those officers and she replaced them with civilians. Random civilians throughout the community. Uh -huh. Might be a union worker over here, it might be a business owner, it might be, you know, just random people in this community, taxpayers who come and sit on this board, and mm -hmm. we let them have a say also and say, who done this? You know, or do, or do you agree or disagree with the sheriff? Or which give me direction on how to punish this person? Mm -hmm. And even then, when that person is punished, that person can appeal that, and it's a hundred percent civilian review board, really? and they can go in front of a civilian review re board and say, "Is this right?" You know, mm -hmm. and this their peers within Jefferson County. We're the only agency that does that in there. I don't know why the cities don't, mm -hmm. and I can't say they might have different rules and regulations because I'm a county person. Right. And I'm not, you know, belittling nobody else up with it, but I'm just speaking on what she brought to the table of a okay. different perspective on punishment or, you know, or letting the officer off. So, what are the the qualifications like if you know just a regular citizen? For well, lack of a better word, well, wants you want, to be on that board. So, you, if you want, if someone wants to be on that board, what that person needs to do, they needs to re, they need to reach out to the sheriff's office and mm -hmm. uh, to our um, our internal affairs division and say, hey, I would like to be my name be put on that list, to take consideration on mm -hmm. uh, being on that board, and then it'll, it'll go from there. So that's how it starts. Oh, you know, okay. We're just not gonna let it, you know. You got to have a clean background. You got to mm -hmm. have you know. We're not gonna just like anybody on it, but right. you gotta be an upstanding person in this community. So when I say upstanding, I'm, you can be working at a 7-Eleven and be upstanding. So Absolutely. I don't want people to take status mm -hmm. with not being upstanding. So anybody with a uh, you know good, good track record for themselves to be placed on that board. And is there anything that has stuck out to you about having citizens on that review board? Surprisingly, sometimes some instances where, like, you know how, like, right now you start, you're saying, wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I think you get in that board and, you know, where you have one mind frame, like, all officers are bad or they've done this or they've been bad. I think in some sense, the officers, the department guys, have been rough on them than the citizens. What? And the citizens are <laughs> like, y'all sure y'all want to? <laughs> do that too wow. no we, you know yeah. and they've let this guy been lighter punishment than mm -hmm. what the actual guys who work there have been done to really yeah. and why do you think that is like why are they less strict if you will because we we treat this you know you hear people say hey we're one big family mm -hmm. and if you really have a serious heart about it like I, my views on on the job is different from your views mm -hmm. and if someone really you know tarnish tarnish the brand i'm more like saying why? Why have you here? You right. Know? And that person might be saying, "No, nah, we gotta give him another chance." You know. <laughs> and to us, we're like, "No, nah, we need to give him another chance." You know. But they're looking at it from a different, different perspective, mm -hmm. and that allows us to communicate and, and, you know, and have a good dialogue with each other. And we come up with the best recommendation we think this person should be punished for. Wow. Okay. So, does the sheriff's department have like investigators mm -hmm. and undercovers? Yes. Really. We have investigators, undercovers. We have. Pilots, mm -hmm. we have uh, cap boat captains, we have 
Warrant guys. I mean, we have it all. Right. Everything a police department, we have a plus. Oh, okay. That's the way. That's a great. Yeah. That's a great way to explain that. Yes. Um, so, can are sheriff deputies also called officers or just deputies? They're deputies. Okay. And just that's just a terminology, but they really okay. we we are all peace officers. We are okay. all state peace officers. Mm -hmm. We all got a state peace officer commission. That's what we all are. Okay. Okay. Now, is it true that inmates receive better medical services, educational services in jail than out of jail? Uh, no. Okay. Because they can't go to any college they want to go to or any oh. hospital they want to go to. So, do they see? Right. Do they receive medical treatment? Yes, they receive medical treatment. Mm -hmm. Is it pretty good medical treatment? Right. The taxpayers pay pretty good for their inmate to get pretty good medical treatment. Do they have educational opportunities? That's only dependent on the head of the agency. Every sheriff's office don't have a, a um, educational where guys can get, get their GED while they're in jail. Really? Because you got to remember what jail is. Jail is the in-between of whether or not that person is going to go to prison or go be free. Mm -hmm. Jail is the in-between. So they don't stay there a long period of time. Okay. So what the sheriff has been real creative with, another perspective, mm -hmm. is she found short-term short term a little certificates and programs to get these guys in okay. and just like the mental health how can that person when that person steps out how can they continue it like if they started a GED program inside here who is this who are we going right. to continue this with yes different perspectives yes. I never yes. would have thought of it and you know out of the 20 years I've been here over 20 years I, uh I'm, the correctional facility is just really 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 now is 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 you can see the shift. You can see mm -hmm. that, you know, hey, I'm going to still keep them into technology world. You know, Chief Schauberg is an excellent chief out there. He has a wonderful major, uh, Major Marcia Guillory, who works under him. And they have an awesome staff of captains, you know. Mm -hmm. and But so do I on, on, on this side where I have, you know, a great Major and Jeff Chatney and a great staff of captains to help us keep this thing going for the sheriff. Because she works hard, we're going to work hard. Okay, okay. Now, you spoke about uh, the TPC explosion. I forgot what that acronym stands for, but that was years ago. Uh, but I know a lot yeah. of people are still dealing with that yes. explosion. It was a plant explosion in Port yes. Natchez, yes. uh, Texas, a couple years ago. So for like plant explosions, hurricanes, COVID, things that hit the community, disasters of such, what does the Sheriff's Department do in those situations? Or we cry now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's we we part we work with the Jefferson County has an emergency management department. Okay. And so we partner with them and we run mm -hmm. all emergency responses. We uh you know we help people eat. We help people get through crisis. Rescue people in okay. a time of need. Set up shelters. Protect the shelters. Okay. Uh, we um we arrange evacuation routes. We you know all of that planning that you see. The sheriff's yes. office is right in the middle. I of had it. no idea. One hundred percent. And then sometimes it's the creative. We we even have to think outside the box and feed animals during that time. So nice. horses, people, cows. You know all the cows you see around here. Yes. She, uh, she, our aviation division. We load the helicopters up with hay. We drop hay on people fields so the cows can come what? up. And that's all a part of that planning that the sheriff's office have to be ready for mm -hmm. if something, if a disaster happens. So you really are right in the midst of everything. In the midst of it. In, I'm telling you, yes. people don't know this. Yes, really. I di didn't know this. Yes, and that could happen if a hurricane get in the Gulf right now, mm -hmm. my life can change tomorrow for the next three months, you know, if it comes here. So. Yeah. yeah. Or longer, you know what I mean? But right. it's, our flood happens overnight. Mm -hmm. We deal with the same as that's what you see is we deal with it. We have to deal with it. Okay. Now, the Sheriff's Department also has a, a canine unit, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, the dogs. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of questions about this. Mm -hmm. Where do y'all get these dogs from? What kind of dogs are they? What's the training like? I'm glad you asked. Dogs? I wish I would have brought Major Channing with me because he's like, really? He's what our guru. Ma uh, our Major Channing is our the cha uh, major that's under me. He's, oh, okay. He, he helps support me. Okay. And, uh, uh, and so he focuses a lot on the canines. But I'm going to give you my educated, what I know. Okay. What, what little bit I know. So our, our canines, 
we purchased our canines from our asset fortune for funds. That's the funds that we had in the uh, asset account that was seized from like drug dealers or okay. something like that, seizures. So we purchased the dog from that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the dog is donated. You know, a lot of times they're German Shepherds or some type of uh, in that family or even a lab or something like that. Okay. But uh, perspective, right? So mm -hmm. what we've done, you see canines on the streets and all of that, we've actually to put some canines inside our jails also okay. to, to you know try to detect if narcotics is coming into the jail okay. and also with that with the canines so um it's different places they have people who actually raise canines kennels okay. that actually sell them to law enforcement agencies that they go out and get and we work very close with other agencies canines bowman canines mm -hmm. port arthur canines and we all train together our guys train together and you know we we just it's that portion of it is very very um you got to be trained a lot in the, with that because i can i, I mean i, I don't want to do it. i have no desire in okay. keeping a dog but it's a very 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 per special person with a uh, certain skill set that we look for to be a canine handler okay so that was going to be my next question who how do you know or is it just training who gets to be with and the see, canine. And see, and I think a lot of people mess up with law enforcement, like mm -hmm. you just said, just training, just training, just train. Yeah. We got to get out of that because everything can't turn into just training. It's okay. not just training. It's not just training. <laughs> we can't find a person through training. We yeah. Can't, we can't, you know, we got right. just because a person trained don't mean we got a bunch of cops out here with guns, but that don't mean I want everyone to showing up to shoot for me. You know what I mean? Right. We just, right. It's more than training. It's okay. a skill set. It's okay. a hard thing. It's a, a okay. you look at, it's a person, how he deals with the community, you know, how he's he in the public. Mm -hmm. It's all of that that's determined, not only for the canine position, but for every position we have, we look for that mold and say, okay. that person can go So ahead. a complete person. No one's no. complete. Right. Because everybody right. has room to grow. Right. But a, a well-rounded skill set person. Okay. To go in. To a certain that said location. better. Yes. That said better. Okay. Now, who gets to um, name the dogs? Uh, not a lot of times the dogs already have names. Oh, okay. And so what happens is you, you send a who if we pick the guys who we think is going to be our canine handlers that go off to the canine kennels where they're mm -hmm. going and they have to connect with the dog that they pick before they even start the training. Okay. So it's a connection thing. It's like kind of. I mean. I'm not a, I'm not a dog person like that, but it's right. kind of a cool thing to see whenever you see it comes together. It's like wow, wow. yeah, okay. like the connection of every, everybody have with an animal within their house. So it's it's a special thing to me. Okay, so we're coming to a close on the interview. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do some quick hitters, okay. meaning first thing that come to mind. Let me know what you think. It's cool. This is cool. I think I think conversations we miss a lot of okay. because we don't stop and listen to the other people talk or, or ask yes. the question. And we all have to be uh, acceptable for people. Whenever a person is screaming, they're screaming for a reason. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just say, hey, let's time out, let you scream for a reason. And now that you finish screaming, what are you screaming about? Oh, wow. And now that you finish screaming, I need you to come to this table and me and you are going to work together to stop yes. you from screaming. And so, so if you're screaming, you got 20 other people screaming, so let's figure this out so we won't continue to have this problem and continue mm -hmm. to grow. I think with that, and I'm going to get to the quick hitters, but I think with that, you have to have patience. Very. Patience and is the key to this game. Most people don't have that. I, like I told you, I've been married for 19 years. I got two <laughs> kids and a grandkid. Patience is, you know, we talk about it today. We're very, very, we're very, very being patient to where we are today. And yes. I tell my kids, you know, you, you don't wake up in the morning and be where you are. Some people right. are. Right. But even that person still have to grow. you got to have patience and give yes. your life time and keep goals and yes. keep focus on life. Yes. So. But most people don't want or don't want the patience, don't have it, whatever you no. say, you know, to let somebody scream and holler and disagree, and with, wait, you. And disagree yes. with you yes. and then calm down to a state to where, okay, now I can yes. talk, you can understand, mm -hmm. let's have a dialogue. That takes a while. That takes a while. And, and that doesn't happen overnight. It does not. It doesn't happen overnight for, like you said, what took so long for this to happen, for a black right. sheriff to be elected. Right. Did it take a long time or did someone finally just sit down and say, you let's, know what? Let's focus on this. Let's see what's going on. Right. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Someone's Absolutely. listening. Okay, so quick hitters. Finish this sentence. This year was. Awesome. 
Okay. Finish yes. this sentence. Next year will be even better. What? Okay. So if you can invite five people to dinner, dead or alive, who are you inviting? Dead or alive. Dead my, or either way. The first person, it's got to be a family member. It's be okay. my grandfather because I spent a lot of. They have thirty something grandkids, and wow. I found, and I spent a lot of one on t one time with my grandfather. Okay. In in his later years, he went blind, but I would like to see him in his prime. Um, I, just the days that he's giving me advice about life, mm -hmm. and him seeing that come to just open, just being, just being, just being. Wow, you done it. And right. This is what my dream was for you. Okay. For me living out his dream. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone else I probably would like to see that Oprah Winfrey. I think oh. her giving heart, I think she connects to the world uh, different. She from, does. She from does. some people, uh, I think that she's actually a uh, a uh, pillar for the. You know, went from generation because we watched her growing up. We did, and we seen her give, and we seen her. You know, we never seen her in any conflict or anything it's true. like that. And so, I would like to see. So, I would like to sit at the table, not for money purpose or status, but just for the education, the education part yes. of it. Um, um, the third person will be um, Martin Luther King. I okay. think you know he he was uh, he his dream. I would like to think. Mm -hmm. I, that we're living out his dream right now. If you've never been to yes. Washington, D.C. to the Washington moment, it's like, you like, whoa, this it's is massive. This is massive. Mm -hmm. I would like to see where we are from his vision. Did we outlive his vision? Or right. are we still striving to get? Now, I know we've got other things mm -hmm. we're working on, but how far did his mind take him? Did your mind just say, boom? Because I promise you, during this time, he never would have said, hey, y'all going to have a black sheriff for Bowman, and then she's going to have right. a black chief, and then she's going to have this, and she's going to have that. Yes. I bet you they never said that. So my table really got to be bigger than five. Yeah. And, so, um, <laughs> okay. and my next person is John okay. F. Kennedy, because John okay. F. Kennedy got it early. And I, somewhat did. I think that's what got his life taken so it soon. Was. And mm -hmm. uh, I think he, he was a, an important man that – changed the, the way that this country was going it didn't change the way that a lot of people thought because mm -hmm. it was during the jim crow era we still had some you know some rough stuff going on with right. us but he started understanding he started listening he started he bringing us to the table listening. table with us mm -hmm. and the last person is my wife oh. because i would always want to eat with her with all these people at the table with me come so on. she can get the same education mindset that i can come on so, and she can cook the food for us and, <laughs> yeah. nah, i'm gonna cook the food i'm gonna cook the food yeah she can cook the food i'm gonna cook the food because i'm gonna grill some burgers and we go yes. make some spaghetti everybody eats spaghetti you know, i can do that <laughs> i can do that okay what is your favorite sports football Football. Yeah, okay. I got a nephew who's mm -hmm. awesome in football right now. He's it's got like forty nine scholarship offers right now. Okay, uh, what school is he, he high school? Seals High School. He'll be okay. senior this year. Draylon Miller, and uh, my other nephew who's a really really good baseball player, mm -hmm. and Jaden Miller. And but football is my sport. But I am a dance dad because. I have a daughter who's in dance. You know, my okay. old, my, my oldest son played football, so y'all was ah. <laughs> But uh, I've had to learn a new love for dance. Okay. And dance parents who yes. spend a lot of money for their kids growing up to learn right. a craft to always have to spend money, mm -hmm. and it's never a break. So, you know, in football, you're saying, oh, I'm not playing football, mm -hmm. or I'm playing, you don't have to spend no money. But even in school sports, you still have to spend a lot of money towards dance. So I learned the dances. So every okay. dance my daughter had to learn, I learned them. Mm -hmm. and. When she's doing them, I critique her. And when she's performing them, I perform them in a dance with them. So, are we gonna see you on TikTok? You about dancing to see me on with TikTok. your daughter? I'm a dance dad, you know. <laughs> yes. So that's that's one of my biggest passion is is that. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And what would you say is your biggest achievement outside of your family, your wife, your kids? What is your biggest achievement? Um, learning how to listen um, to people. Mm -hmm. um, the education part helped me there. Okay. I never would have thought that getting an education was important. And I used to be one of those people that say, hey, you don't need an education or uh, a college degree is the same as a military guy or a college degree doesn't make you better than no one. And I still don't think it makes you better mm -hmm. than no one. But what I think it does, I think it's opened up your mind to accept dialogue a little bit better. Okay. And I think it's, a, uh, it's what's needed in governmental work, especially in law enforcement, because especially in today's time, you have so many students with so many different views and so many different uh, ideas of how to make this world a better place. Okay. And I think college is the place where everybody's 
going, and some people call it liberalism because they so way over there, mm -hmm. but uh, some everybody's not, and it helps you get a better understanding, and it helps you open up and be a better public speaker and be able to not offend someone in the room while you're speaking. So mm -hmm. getting an education was like, I was the first one to get a college degree out of my mom, five kids, you know. Okay. Uh, now my, I had a sister, my dad had, had girls with the next with his other marriage uh, with my stepmom and that, you know, they had some wonderful girls over there and we, I had a sister, but out of my mom, kids, mm -hmm. I was the first one to get a, a college education. Now, my very last question for you, who do you think would make a great guest on the show? Oh, uh, LaShawn Samuels. Okay. Yeah, I think he'd be good. I think he's, mm -hmm. uh, um, he's a guy that I really look, I look up to. I, I, mean, I love seeing LaShawn and work in the courtroom. He's, he's so good in the courtroom that mm -hmm. I've watched him in trial mm -hmm. and I've left and I've tweaked things. So if I ever had to go to trial against him, I beat him. So, yeah. <laughs> but he might have another curveball. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he, he's a uh, you know very professional guy. Mm -hmm. He's a, a loving husband. I don't think you, we hear that enough from men to men. He's a loving husband. Okay. He loves his wife, uh, and he's a uh, he, he believes in his community, and he's a great motivator to make me want to believe in this community. Because like I said, I grew up in Sealsby, mm -hmm. so you have people like him and AJ and 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 even uh, you know, Pastor Fashaw, and you have you know. New elected West, they make you want to believe in this community, no matter what it, people' political views were on that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see people who continue to make people believe in Beaumont, believe in Jefferson County, believe in all of this thing of where we're taking this to the next step, because we have to be the pillar. So right. that's why I say LaShawn, I think he's, he can be the head of that. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming and agreeing and sitting down uh, for this interview, you have given me so many aha moments, and I appreciate it. You have corrected my thinking <laughs> yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. on a lot of things, and I appreciate that. And that's something else that people need to be able to do, accept yeah. change of yes. thinking. And you've done that for me in this interview. So thank you so much but for keep pushing down. and keep fighting for your cause. Yes. And just be mindful of it. You know? Yes, so. yes. Again, thank you so much. And thank you for watching and listening. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So